Hey there, good morning everybody and welcome to another edition of Tropics Talk. I'm meteorologist Jim Dickey here in the ABC7 Hurricane Center. Of course, we're going to focus here this morning on Tropical Storm Fiona. It's the 5 o'clock advisory on Fiona. We'll put uh, the satellite into motion for you there. Winds sustained at 50 miles per hour, moving to the west at uh, 15 miles per hour. It's that blob of red you see, a thunderstorm activity you see off to the due east of the Lesser Antilles of the Windward Islands. Now, uh, this has weakened a little bit overnight, which isn't much of a surprise, as we'll talk about at length here in just a moment. Wind shear is doing a number on Fiona, as it has over the last uh, 24 or so hours. In fact, I, I'm waiting on the 8 o'clock advisory here. I'm recording this for you right about 7.15 in the morning. Uh, there's one Hurricane Hunter aircraft in the storm right now. A second is just about to arrive. As far as uh, this flight, they haven't been able to find much over 45 mile per hour winds. The current surface wind uh, there north of the storm, 46 miles per hour. Now I suspect somewhere in that blob of deep convection, they'll find winds, a wind gust, 45 knots, 50 miles an hour, 55 miles per hour. But right now this is not much of a wind maker. And again, that's not much of a surprise because when you look at the storm itself, and I dive in this, I wanna do some telestration for you here, you know, uh, Structurally, this is not a look a tropical system that is about to become a hurricane would take. It, it's tough to sort of make out on this type of satellite presentation, this IR presentation here this morning. But the low level center, as I go to the end of the loop, is actually right about there. Meanwhile, all the thunderstorm activity displaced off to the east, and that's thanks to the wind shear. A healthy tropical storm, something that's on the verge of becoming a hurricane, is vertically stacked. If the low level center, uh, the mid level area of uh, rotation vorticity, the upper level all stacked exactly vertically, you can get that low pressure center there to deepen at the surface. You get high pressure aloft that vents, that warm air outward. And uh, again, that's how you get that sort of classic hurricane structure. And the winds can really start to ramp up as a result. Not the case with this one because it's sheared and tilted as you go up in the atmosphere right now. But although. When I take that telestration off, actually I'll leave it on, you can sort of see some of the storms trying to creep back westward towards the center. So that's what I'll be watching today. Is this able to sort of reestablish itself, reestablish that convection over the center of the storm? Chances are, no, it won't be able to because when you look at the current wind shear and where Fiona is and headed, that shear should stay strong. Now, no, this is current. This isn't showing you a model. There's already that sort of gap in that wind shear, a pocket of lower shear near Puerto Rico. If anything, that uh, area of red here on this map showing you high wind shear is going to lift northward. And so as Fiona noses uh, past the Leeward Islands and on into uh, the northern Caribbean, south of Puerto Rico, a little gap in the wind shear could allow Fiona to sort of gain some strength there. And at the very least, this is going to bring a whole lot of rainfall to the Windward Islands, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and Hispaniola going through the weekend. That impact is more or less locked in at this point in time. Flooding, rain, landslide, something we'll be watching for. The different model forecasts, though, all sort of buying in on the general idea that this remains a tropical storm through the next 48 to 72 hours. Some, uh, like the ever-eager H-Wharf, that purple line you see does ramp it up to hurricane strength. Uh, but most, again, keep this a marginal tropical storm to the longer range when potentially we're talking something in the southwest Atlantic and the conditions become a little more ripe potentially for it to come together. So here's the latest cone forecast from the Hurricane Center calls for this to move over the uh, Windward Islands, Lesser Antilles uh, going through uh, tonight, early tomorrow morning. Of No, this is a little further south than what the initial forecast called for. If anything, you see the path this is taken. It's actually lost a little bit of latitude over the past 24 hours. Uh, that allows this to go into the North Caribbean to stay south of Puerto Rico, which again, even if this doesn't come together, going south of Puerto Rico, even if it's still feeling that wind shear, it will place Puerto Rico as this starts to turn northward in that pocket of very heavy rain, heavy storm. So again, the threat for heavy rain, that's locked in at this point for the northern tier, the northern chain of the Caribbean islands. And then this heads towards Hispaniola. And that's where the questions begin. This will likely emerge to the north, although in what state that remains to be seen, tracking east or over the Bahamas 
going into the middle of next week. So again, this is a five-day comb. There's still quite a ways to go before this even starts to emerge out of the Caribbean. But I think the big question in the longer-term forecast for Fiona is what happens over Hispaniola. A number of storms over the years have been completely shredded by these high mountaintops, especially if Fiona remains this highly sheared system that's struggling to keep itself together. If it's still struggling by the time it reaches Hispaniola, well, that could completely tear it apart. It could dissipate. It could break apart the low-level center. Uh, but if it does hold together, and let's assume for our purposes it does hold together, it will emerge in the southwest Atlantic and likely move north. So right now, Fiona is being steered by that Atlantic Ridge, the area of high pressure you see in blue across the central Atlantic, keeping it on that westerly track. Going into the weekend, it'll back off. It'll be centered way over the northeastern Atlantic, and that will allow Fiona to make that turn to the north and the northwest, eventually even perhaps due north which will definitely depend on the intensity of the storm. A stronger storm will feel sort of the, the pull of that ridge a little more, will steer quickly to the north. A weaker storm moves more slowly and isn't picked up necessarily by that ridge as quickly as otherwise would. You can see the tropical forecast models, each line different model forecasts, in pretty good agreement. This goes right over Hispaniola, potentially east of those mountains, and then heads over the Bahamas, and begins its more northerly course. But again, there is some disparity here. Two different model forecasts, GFS in green, European in white. These are isobars or lines of equal pressure. The GFS has a much stronger system tracking more due north, and as such would likely make this turn out to sea. The European keeps this a little bit weaker, a little more disorganized, so you don't see as many lines there. It's a weaker low pressure area that emerges and then moves more slowly comes closer to the east coast of florida to the east coast of the united states in general and that's really i think the big question in the long term because if this moves more slowly this is by next saturday so two saturdays out a week plus from now model is pretty consistent that a ridge of high pressure is going to move out from the northeast out into the north atlantic now you still see a window here let me jump in and do some telestration here too. You still see a window here between the two where perhaps this could make its way out in the Atlantic. So what's the GFS forecast does? This is actually the GFS forecast here. It could escape out in the Atlantic, go between the two ridges, no impacts to really any land area save for Bermuda whatsoever. However, if this is a slower moving storm, it emerges out of the Bahamas, and say parks itself right about here by Saturday, well now your ridge of high pressure is going to build out over top of it and that could in essence back that closer to the coast. Something to definitely watch for in the longer range of the forecast, which is still again a week plus out from now. So more questions than answers at this point. I think really at this point the first thing we got to get through is what emerges from Hispaniola. How strong is it and what are we looking at? at that point in time. That will really help to determine what we're talking about impacts wise. So here are your takeaways for now. I think at this point it's locked in heavy rain, gusty winds for the Caribbean, uh, for the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola in particular. Uh, starting uh, late tomorrow, I think is when the worst impacts begin and lasting into Sunday. Uh, direct impacts here in Southwest Florida, unlikely at this point. Not a lot of support in the models and anything comes close to us, but it's something we'll be watching for. And I don't think at this point, unfortunately, we can rule out impacts to the United States, especially if it's weaker, if it's slower. You could see that come much closer to the coast than what, say, the GFS forecast model is showing right now. So this is definitely one we'll be watching closely. Be sure you're checking in throughout the weekend uh, for updates here at ABC7. We'll have uh, the latest on Fiona for you all weekend long on air and online. Until then, I'm meteorologist Jim Dickey. Have a great day.